Hi there! Today I'm in Loggerheads in North Wales near Mould and today I'm about to go and find a disappearing river. This area is called Loggerheads because there was a really big dispute between landowners about the mineral rights in this area. It was settled in 1763 and in the 18th and 19th century this wonderful special area of limestone was extensively mined for lead and zinc. The path that I'm walking along here follows the line of the River Allen and the River Allen is a tributary of the River Dee that you might know from Llangollen or Chester and Rivers are really important for mining communities for a number of different reasons, but mainly for power. And the water power was able to power and make move a lot of the machinery that made the mining easier and safer. Unlike the area I was just in back there, um, I can no longer hear the river, although it is still here. And that is a clue to what's about to happen to it. I'm hoping you can just about see in the centre of the picture here what looks like a little whirlpool, essentially. Um, and that is what it is. We're on a limestone riverbed here and limestone is porous. And along this riverbed, there are naturally occurring swallow holes and the water disappears down there. When there's uh, been a lot of heat, not a lot of rain, the water level drops, the river actually disappears under the ground and this is where it starts to disappear. So here I can, I can just about hear <laughs> a, a trickling sound um, where the water's going away. Um, in the centre of the screen there you might just be able to see with the light and one of those swallow holes there following the river um, down here it's getting lower and lower and not moving anymore um, we've got a little wagtail uh, enjoying the river here too and then as we go further and further and further down the river just disappears So if you can believe it, I'm currently sat at the bottom of a river. I'm sat on the riverbed. Just so happens that the river isn't here at the moment. I can see the river there and it reappears over there. But at the moment, the river is actually underground. And it's because the water level has dropped, it's gone down underneath into the caves of the lead mines. There are a number of cave systems um, from the River Allen around the area of Loggerheads um, and underneath there's a whole world that we just don't see. Walking around Loggerheads Country Park you can't help but kind of stumble across old kind of buildings and heritage and architecture left over from the mining history here. Behind me this would have once been a wheel pit, it would have had a massive massive water wheel um, housed here and along the way there are lots of mills and they would have been powered by the water to then power pumps to pump the water out of the mines underneath. But although this year has been a record-breaking heat wave this isn't the first time that the river has disappeared underground. It's happened a long time. Uh, the limestone is porous, it gets eaten away and the river goes down into the caves below. So what happens when the water dried up, they couldn't power the mills to pump out the water, what did they do all those years ago to keep the area safe and the mines clear of water? Flooding was a major issue and they didn't have a constant water source, especially when the water from the river kept drying up. So this here was one of the solutions. It's called a leet. And this was actually dug out purposefully to divert water from the river to carry it in this trough along this way. And it would have ended up this one at the water wheel in the, the wheel pit that we just saw, which would have been 40 foot in height. That would have then powered the pumps underground and would have pumped water 165 feet from underground to keep the mines dry. I'm walking along the aptly named Leet Path and the Leet on this side of the river would have been built and constructed 
all along this way in 1824 and ran for three whole miles in order to get that constant water supply up the valley to power all the mills along the way. I've just taken a slight diversion down from the Leet Path um, down to a road. I'm currently going over a little bridge that goes over the river which passes a ford in the road and as you can see behind me no river but I turn around and it's beginning to come back. Now that is usually deep underwater the ford in the road there but it has just a few puddles really uh, behind me but we have found the river again. I've looped back round and I'm now nearly back at the tea gardens at Loggerheads and we're back at the river and the thing that struck me most is the sound. You can hear the water flowing, you can hear the trickling and back there there was nothing. It was just quite eerie, quite spooky, there was just no sound of the river at all. Um, but in its heyday, when the mines were open, this would have been a very different sound here at Loggerheads. There would have been lots of people, lots of movement, lots of machinery. It would have been a very busy place. Now it's busy for different reasons for recreation. But what happened here? Well, the flooding really became a very big issue. They tried to raise funds to invest in steam powered machinery to power those pumps to get the water out of the mines, but they weren't able to raise the funds and therefore the mine was closed in 1871. So here I am back at the tea gardens at Loggerheads, um, enjoying a little sit down on a picnic bench overlooked by some truly magnificent limestone cliffs and the limestone pavement above me here um, and here just enjoying the country park much like a lot of other people. After the mines closed in 1926 the Crossville Bus Company bought the site and basically it became a hub for people to come for day trips on the buses from Liverpool and it still remains a really popular destination from people from all over especially the northwest today. I hope you've really enjoyed my little adventure today to find the disappearing river of loggerheads and if you have enjoyed it please do like and subscribe and if you could if you could share it with any groups and friends and family who might also find it interesting I'd be very grateful and I will continue to share my little trips out to find some exciting and interesting places in the area. Thank you, bye bye.